What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today I'm reviewing the 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2018. This is the base model, 256 gigabyte hard drive inside, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Intel Core i7. It's $2,400 here in the United States, just about half the price of the iMac Pro that sits behind me. And I had the 2016 MacBook Pro before this. The reason I upgraded is because there were some cool new features like a True Tone display, a new keyboard, of course, a faster processor. And I wanted to check that out to see if the upgrade was worth it and really figure out who this 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro is for. So I've been using this new MacBook Pro for a couple of weeks now. I've spent a lot of hours, a lot of time with this and I like it a lot. The best way I can describe it is a really, really good computer, but it's not great and it's not exceptional. It's just really good. And I think the average user who's gonna be checking their email, browsing the web, messing around with photos a little bit, checking social media, typing things on pages or Keynote or something like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel. I think you're gonna be really, really happy with this computer, especially if you're buying it as a college laptop. I think you're gonna be really happy. But uh, I use it creatively and I've got some other thoughts that I'll cover later in this video. But first I just wanna jump into what's new with this MacBook Pro. Obviously up first is the processor. Inside of mine is the eighth generation Intel Core i7 processor, and you may have heard a lot of controversy about the i9. I never had the i9 chip, so I never really ran into some throttling uh, thermal issues. However, if you had the i9, like it's all been corrected, Apple has fixed the errors or issues with this machine. I didn't own a 2017 MacBook Pro, but switching from 2016 to 2018, web pages load faster, emails load quicker. I feel like I can type better because there's a new keyboard, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But largely, new processing power, I can absolutely feel, even editing videos, which I'll jump into in more detail in a little bit, it feels really good. I can clearly feel the additional power here, uh, and the new processor inside is really good. The only big downside is that it gets really, really hot. It's really toasty, like toastier than any other computer that I think I've ever used. And that's sort of the price that we have to pay for the new chip in this MacBook. The beauty of the 2018 MacBook Pro and pretty much any other MacBook Pro before it, and a lot of what you're paying for is the design. It sounds silly, and I'm not talking just about the Apple logo. I'm talking about the actual architecture here. Like Apple has packed a lot inside a laptop that is incredibly thin and light. And I really appreciate that. I really like that but the body does hold the chip inside back because it gets so hot it can't ramp up to speeds as quick as say a Windows laptop could with a thicker body but better cooling inside. It just can't do that, so instead the fans kick on right away whenever you're doing something and it gets really hot. And you get that at the price of a laptop that is this thin and light. For a lot of people that's worth it, for a lot of people that might not be worth it. I think I fall somewhere in the middle. I appreciate the design, but part of me also wants a thicker laptop that can go faster and cool itself better. So that's very important to take into consideration with this MacBook Pro. That's one of the bigger upgrades with this year's model. Another really big upgrade is the True Tone display. Now this is a change, it's the first time it's ever been on a Mac to date. A piece of paper will change color temperatures depending on where you hold it, so why shouldn't your iPhone or iPad or computer screen do the same? I really like that logic, and the Retina display on here is, it's just fantastic. Like using and looking at anything with the Retina display on this year's MacBook or the MacBooks from years past. And now with True Tone, it's even better. It's just a really great experience. And I think it's one of the main reasons you should be looking at this computer. The screen is so good. It's like having your iPhone screen on your laptop. Now sitting below the screen on the 2018 Mac Pro is the touch bar. And I talked about this a lot in my initial review of the 2016 MacBook. I basically said, I think it's pretty useful, but a lot of apps need to get updated for it to be worth it. And since then, a lot of apps have been updated but I don't get it yet. Apple kind of had this grandiose vision of this is gonna change the way you interact with your laptop, and it's not. Don't let their marketing and how cool it looks fool you into believing that. The touch bar, as I use it, is just a replacement for the function keys. I like it better than the function keys. I like the fact that it dynamically changes, but I cannot tell you the last time I was using an application and I consciously thought to myself, this will be faster to interact with the touch bar than just using my keyboard and my trackpad. Like never have I had a case where doing something is quicker with the touch bar 
than just doing it with the trackpad and keyboard like you've always had on a laptop. That's been my experience. I know other people have had different experiences, but if I could buy a model of the 2018 MacBook Pro without a touch bar and it was even like 50 bucks cheaper, I would absolutely go that route. Next up, I wanna talk about the new keyboard on the 2018 MacBook Pro. It's third generation butterfly design from Apple. The first and second generations have had a lot of issues, so bad at the point where keys were sticking, keys would stop working, dust would get stuck underneath and mess up your keyboard. Apple had to launch a keyboard replacement program, so if you've had issues, you can go to Apple and I think you can get it fixed for free. So Apple did some design change here. They created a third generation version that they say is quieter. Uh, they don't talk about the reliability at all, but they do claim it's quieter. I can't tell the fact that it's quieter at all. I included this clip in my initial unboxing. The only difference is that the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros had a slightly tinnier click or clack, where this is just ever so slightly bassier or more mid-rangey. Very small difference in sound, but that's because there is a new silicon barrier underneath of each of these keys so that dust can't get inside and hopefully mess up your keyboard. I think dust still can get inside and cause some issues, but it's definitely or seemingly much more reliable than before. That being said, it feels better on this MacBook. I've definitely enjoyed typing on this MacBook Pro more than I've enjoyed typing on any other MacBook Pro in the past, but if you don't like the butterfly keyboard that's super chiclety, very like tiny key travel, you're not gonna like this one because it's still very similar. The last big upgrade for the 2018 MacBook Pro is definitely better speakers. Apple didn't really talk about this at all, which is super strange, but you can hear the difference right here. My ears picked up on two things when I heard this. Number one, the new MacBook Pro speakers can get so much louder, which is really cool. And number two, it's also a higher quality sound. Now, the higher you go, it gets a little bit distorted. I wouldn't recommend like getting this for a main speaker. You're not gonna throw a party listening to music off the speakers on the new MacBook Pro, but it is bass here and more mid-rangey. It's a lot less tinny than before, which I think is a really good sound. It sounds good, it's not great. Uh, obviously, if you want like really good sound, you'll be buying external speakers anyway, but for out of the box, included with this MacBook Pro, it's still a big step up from 2016 and 2017, and I really appreciate the better sound here. So that's a general overview of the 2018 MacBook Pro, but I also wanna talk about my experience editing videos with this machine. It's been honestly pretty rough. I thought it would be a lot better than it was for $2,400. The number one annoyance that I have with editing videos on here is the fact that the fans come on instantly. I talked about that quite a bit when I talked about the new processor, how this thing gets hot. The fans come on instantly to cool the MacBook, but the fans just blow hot air out, so they make you hot while editing. And the bottom of this machine gets so, so hot when I'm editing, to the point where I cannot leave this on my lap and edit a video. I cannot use it as a laptop. I have to set it on a desk which is definitely a little bit frustrating considering how portable and light this machine is. It's just too hot. Even setting it on a desk or a bed, sometimes it feels like it's just gonna catch on fire. And it doesn't because it's not actually that hot, but it definitely gets so warm. And a lot of warmness combined with fans while editing, it makes it hard to hear my own audio when I'm playing it out of the speakers on the MacBook Pro. And if you're trying to record clean, good sounding audio, Obviously, you don't wanna hear fan noise in the background. When I'm live streaming, the fans kick on instantly. When I'm making videos, the fans kick on instantly. When I'm editing just a small image in Pixelmator Pro, when I'm editing a thumbnail for my YouTube videos, the fans kick on instantly. It seems like no matter what I'm doing, I think sometimes I'm even online watching YouTube videos, this MacBook is burning up. It's so frustrating. It shouldn't be the case for $2,400 because I didn't have issues this bad on my 2016 MacBook Pro. I'm really noticing the compromises that Apple made to put a chip as powerful as the 8th generation Intel Core i7 processor inside of here because it doesn't feel like that chip was meant to ever go in this computer. Uh, I have the Xeon chip in my iMac Pro and one of the benefits that I definitely wanna hit on with Intel's Core i uh, processor series is the fact that they have quick sync support. So exporting videos on the MacBook Pro is actually faster than the twice the cost iMac Pro behind me. Uh, here's some numbers on the screen. I think it was about a minute 30, minute 40 seconds faster to do a 10-ish minute export on the 2018 MacBook Pro versus the 2017 iMac Pro. Once again, iMac Pro being twice the price. So if exporting videos is super important to you, 
As hot as the MacBook Pro gets, it is faster at exporting video. For some tests, clearly the MacBook Pro is better. For exporting videos, it's likely going to be faster every single time, even though the graphics card and the CPU is slower. The quick sync support on the Intel processor there makes it so much better than the Xeon chip that doesn't have quick sync on the iMac Pro. That being said, for just complete raw power output, the iMac Pro is clearly faster and it can cool itself better and it can cool itself quieter because I don't think the chip gets as hot Hot as the i7 compressed in this little tiny MacBook body uh, that Apple has squeezed it inside. The battery life is okay whenever you start doing something intensive, it drops really fast. Like if you're just browsing the web, if you're just checking your email, checking social media, the battery life will probably be five, six, seven hours of continuous usage depending on what you're doing and for how long. But for creative work, it doesn't seem to last more than two or three hours. And that definitely disappointed me here. I thought it was going to be a lot better, but as soon as I started editing with it unplugged, I noticed the battery drops so quick. The point that I want to get across about the 2018 Mac Pro is that I like this machine a lot, but the battery life isn't great, and while the processor is so fast, it gets really hot, and the fan noise is super annoying, and while it allows me absolutely at the end of the day to get my creative work done, sometimes exporting videos, or almost all the time, exporting videos faster than on my iMac Pro, Getting there is not as enjoyable as on my iMac Pro. I love this computer. I like it a lot. I'm not going to be returning it because I like it so much. But there's a lot here that I just want to see Apple improve for the 2019 model, for the 2020 model. Focus on battery life. Don't be afraid to make it a little bit thicker. And you have to figure out how to cool this machine more efficiently. It won't make using this computer impossible. It just makes it really hard if you want to use it on your lap or use it on the road. And those are my thoughts on the 2018 MacBook Pro. If you enjoyed watching, drop a like down below, subscribe for more Apple reviews in the future. You can get the shirt I'm wearing right now over at updatebrand.com if you're interested. But for now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I will talk to you in my next video.